brief interlude. Uh, thank you very much, Jim, for the kind introduction, and to Susan and others for uh, inviting me to give it to address. This is my first time meeting these lovely people here today. Um, so you heard just as interesting um, prelude to my talk, we just heard about um, instability, and if you noticed on the pictures, the MRI pictures, you would have seen uh, some discs in the spine that looked dark, some looked light, and you saw movement abnormalities, compression of spinal cord and so forth. So we're going to talk about that. I'm not a neurosurgeon. I can't fix anything. Um, but my job is to try and give these smart people a better mousetrap. So uh, I'd like to talk to you about uh, the last 18 years of our work, looking at why does a disc degenerate in the first place, and can we do anything about it? And uh, so on, without with further ado, I guess I'll try and see if I can change the degeneration to regeneration. Is that possible? I know the consonants, it's just one word, but you know. Okay, so let's talk about some geography, first of all. Um, where's my laser pointer? Is that it? Oh, good. So there's a the vertebrae, there's the top one, there's the bottom one. There's a disc nucleus on the inside, the annulus is on the outside. You've got a capillary network from the bone marrow that feeds this cartilage end plate above and below. I'm gonna talk all about this today. I don't know anything very much about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, a little. I'm not an expert, but I know a lot about this. And I think there's some things we can learn here. What you need to know is inside the nucleus here, you'll see that there's oxygen and glucose, which is a nutrient for energy, and the lactic acid, which is, of course, a waste product. And what happens on the inside is it's kind of inverse to what you want. On the inside, there's not much glucose. There's almost no oxygen. Um, and there's lots of waste products. And what happens is all the bad stuff has to, from cellular metabolism, has to get out, and the good stuff has to get in. The disc has no blood supply, except the very, 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 very outside. The rest of the inside is like your fingernail, not the bottom, but the other part, or this. It's not dead, but there's no, there's no oxygen in there. There's no blood vessels. So how do these cells survive? It's a pretty crummy place to live, if you ask me. But what happens is they live by virtue of um, diffusion of oxygen and glucose in and out in a kind of precarious environment. And as long as things work out okay and the cells are making the right stuff and getting the right stuff, things are happy. What happens to degenerative disease is something goes wrong with that whole equation. So we're going to talk a bit about that today. This is a bit of a cartoon just showing you what you heard earlier about uh, proteoglycans and collagen. When things go wrong with that, the disc degenerates. Same thing happens in arthritis and ligamentous disease. This looks like a centipede here. This is a proteoglycan called agrican. This is a cartoon of it. I want you to pay attention to these toothbrushes here. Um, this is really pretty important to what happens. So this long thing here is uh, called hyaluronic acid. Is lots of it in synovial fluid and cartilage in the disc, to which are attached these toothbrushes, which have these funny little side chains. You may have go, gone to a health food store and buy, bought, con, buy, bought chondroit, chondroitin sulfate to take through arthritis maybe, or you know, glucosamine, things like that, that's all in here. So when this molecule is stable, there's lots of sulfur or sulfate residues on these molecules, which are negatively charged. Water is hydrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. It's positive and polar, so they attract each other. And as long as this stru structural network is intact, then water molecules hang on and life is good. When these things break down, water molecules cannot bind anymore, and it doesn't work properly. That's more to it than that, but it's kind of the basis of it. This is another cartoon just showing what it looks like. This is hyaluronic acid here. There's the toothbrushes, and you got these big collagen fibers. And the reason collagen is important in the disc, and cartilage too, is it's a structural integrity molecule. You may have heard that in Haiti a number of years ago, it was this terrible earthquake, right? A whole bunch of, of buildings shook to pieces. You know which ones that didn't break, break, break down so much? It's the ones made by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers because they had rebars in the concrete. And after they kicked the Americans out years later, a lot of construction was done with these bricks without rebars. And so the vibration from the earthquake, they just shattered and fell to pieces. So the collagen, in this case type 2, gives a lot of structural integrity to a network that otherwise hangs on to water. So that's kind of how it works. Um, and certain patients with EDS are disposed to disc disease. We just heard a great talk earlier about the cervical spine. And, 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 and this leads to instability, and the cervical spine can certainly impinge the spinal cord and cause all kinds of problems. Uh, so the thing is, we look at treating patients with surgery to, to, to stabilize this, but what if we could intervene upstream of this? Wouldn't that be something to look at? 
So when it just degenerate, you got this nucleus pulposus cell. In humans, are kind of like cartilage cells with these toothbrushes I told you about. And you've got all these players, these molecules that cause the toothbrush here to kind of uh, fall apart. And what happens, you get these Pac-Man things. You're all too young here. There was a game called Pac-Man when I was in school. <laughs> and this Pac-Man would chew up these little white, little colored things. We'd do it you know, Friday afternoons, usually you can't think anymore. So all these Pac-Man up here, MMPs and aggregates of collagenases, they, they degrade this proteolycan. And so what happens is it flies off the cell, can't work anymore. So these enzymes degrade the cartilage. And normally, you have a, a, a balance of Pac-Men to break things down, the construction workers, are, they're, they're fixing things. So in your skin and your gums and so on, this is an ongoing renewal and it's normal. But in degenerative disease, the, 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 the teeter-totter gets out of, out of whack. You get excess catabolism, that's breakdown, insufficient anabolism, that's repair, and it degenerates. And what happens is these proteoglycans, we call them aggregating here because they kind of get together, they can't work anymore, they lose their water binding, cells die off, and the thing uh, goes south. This is a patient with Ehlers-Danlos, and we just saw a minute ago a very nice presentation showing some, almost the same as this, dark discs up here, nice bright ones. They're bright because they're full of water, kind of, like it's water rich, it's able to bind water. So the T2 image shows this. The dark discs are water deficient, means that as I showed you a minute ago, the proteoglycan network can no longer bind water molecules and it degenerates. So in this person, when they bend backwards, now you can see, well, I have actually, I've made this easy for myself. Uh, there's a red circle. Watch that one and look at it here. There's a bit of translation, the disc, the spinal segment moves a bit, becomes unstable. We talk about ligamentous instability. It's all because of the disc. Because other joints, other ligaments may be unstable. If the disc is stable, it won't move like that. So it's really a central player here. So what's really going on here? This is the big thing, right? What's, <laughs> what's really the story? Um, so we did, we did a bunch of work to try and uh, model this in, a, in an animal. So this is a rat tail, right? They have discs to them just like you do. Um, they're smaller. But under x-ray guidance, we put a needle right through it and wait a couple minutes and take it out. And then we... Uh, left it alone. And then we did a whole bunch of them, and then we would euthanize them uh, at, seven, at, at 72 hours here, uh, and every week up to 10 weeks. So I want to show you, so this is called Western blotting. It's kind of, you know, uh, a nerve, nerd talk from a scientist, but to make it clear to what's going on here, what I want to draw your attention to the, is this. That's the Pac-Man. And those Pac-Men aren't doing anything up until almost 10 weeks. But then all of a sudden they're doing a lot. This guy here is the one that stops the Pac-Man from degenerating anything. Don't you dare digest these collagens. That's called TIMP1. It's very active after injury, and right there it stops. We don't see it anymore. At the same time as these guys show up, tremendously huge. This, COX-2, is a very, very important inflammatory player. You may have heard of anti-inflammatory drugs, Celebrex, right? These things, those are COX-2 inhibitors. They inhibit arthritic inflammation. Look what happens to the expression of COX-2, right at the same time the Pac-Man show up. This guy here, IL-1-beta, interleukin-1-beta, is a major pro-inflammatory cytokine. It's a big player in arthritis. And the active subunit is right there. So it increases expression, but the active subunit shows up right there at the same time everybody else does. So what this tells me is that there's a major kind of inflammatory thing that happens after injury that in this case sort of extinguishes by 10 weeks. Now, I'll get this picture in a minute. Down here is showing some cell signaling. I don't want to bore you too much, but this OCT4 and that thing, nanog, these are stem cell markers. There's discs, discs have stem cells in them. We've reported about this. And if you look what happens after injury, they get a, you get a, it gets bigger bands, which means these stem cell markers are active. The stem cells are doing something. This is a marker of notochordal cells. The notochordal cells, I'll talk about in a minute, are the cells that build the disc in the first place. Humans have them until late childhood, early adolescence, then they're gone, and they turn more, we think, into cartilage cells. So you can see that there's something's going on with them. There's a bigger increase in their expression, then by 10 weeks, everything seems to stop. Now look at this picture here. These are, this is what it looks like inside the disc at baseline, healthy. As these are cells full of notochordal cells. This shows proteoglycans. Agrican is that, is that toothbrush I showed you before that binds under water. And collagen type 2, I explained it to you earlier. So it's brown if it's present. So you can see all kinds of brown there. So that's normal. 
four weeks, at 10 weeks, you don't see much of anything. These things are mostly gone. So the disc degenerates to become a largely acellular, fibrocartilaginous, degenerative looking thing. And that's uh, consistent with what we show what happens over time. Okay, so there is what it looks like normally. Then we injure it, and that's what happens to it later. It looks a lot like a human disc, actually, after injury, after this inflammatory thing happens. Here's another picture. I showed you a minute ago that the notochordal cells markers are gone by 10 weeks. So here's a picture. Brachyuri is a, is a transcription factor, which is demonstrative of notochordal cells. It's green, and there it is. There it isn't in 10, years, 10 weeks. So we've pretty, a pretty good model of what happens in disc disease in humans and so forth. And this is another, this is SOX9 is a major cartilage marker. And you can see it's not very much. It's right here, these brown things, a little bit in these notochordal cells. But 10 weeks later, um, it's, uh, it's, it's everywhere. So it shows that the disc degenerates and turns into kind of a cartilaginous degenerative phenotype. Okay. So we think that this injury can model what happens in human disease. So what, how's it work? Well, I showed you all these Western blots and stuff before and all that jazz. I explained this to you. I want to show you these two things. Uh, Sox and I told you this is a marker of chondrocyte activity. So it goes from nothing to a lot of expression. And simultaneously, there's a big increase in collagen expression. So there's a lot of collagen being formed in there over time. Um, but you know, we, we, it's trying to repair itself is what seems to happen. Now, this is a, getting into some of the work we did in our lab also. So what happens over time is some of these ECM means extracellular matrix. So in the cartilage or, or, or discs, you've got cells in there and all the stuff outside of that where the proteoglycans and collagens live. So what happens over time is some of these proteins are involved with inhibition of growth repair activity. So this is a work of my colleague in, in the UK, Sally Roberts Group, uh, and Jim Melrose in Australia, they took human discs from scoliosis, degenerative disc disease, and herniated discs. And what you need to know is these bands down here on the western blot, these show that that, remember I told you about the, about the toothbrush that binds the water? Well, that the middle part of that is called a core protein, and it fragments when it degenerates. When it fragments, it can't hang on to water molecules anymore. So they show in degenerative human discs, they get these fragmented bands. So it, means, it means that this is what's happening. So we thought, well, that's interesting. Well, how is that relevant to us? Well, we spent about 18 years now trying to figure out why it is that mongrel dogs never get this disease and beagle dogs do. And so the dachshunds, poodles, shih tzus, and ter other terriers, and they're all dogs. So what's the difference? The difference is that that's the disc you want, but that's the disc you got. Um, you had this when you're five or six, but over time it becomes like this. These are age-matched dogs. This is a so-called chondrodystrophic, that's a non chondrodystrophic dog, that's full of notochordal cells and that's full of cartilaginous cells and that looks just like a degenerative disc in a human. And those are the funky cells in there that, that, that seem to be the difference. So we've done a lot of time trying to figure out what these cells do if they do anything. And we looked at, these, at the discs in these animals and we showed that the beagle disc has these fragmented core proteins just like humans do. So the be mongrel disc does not. These are perfectly normal. So we thought, okay, so the beagle disc has lost similarities to humans, but the mongrel disc doesn't get, doesn't get that fragmented core protein problem. Okay, don't look at that. Far too, I hate people show stuff like this, like what does that mean? So let's just forget that and let's look at this. That's the very top. All I want you to look at is that and that. And I think you'll see that they're different, right? One's showing point something, one's showing big numbers. This is a, it's complicated, it's called eye tract mass spectroscopy, blah, blah, blah. What it means is we quantitatively looked at how the proteins are different in the dog that doesn't get disease and the ones that do. And we thought, well, these proteins are much more liberated and these are all these extracellular matrix proteins. So I thought, well, why would they be more, ex more liberated? Maybe it's because the disc is naturally degenerating and they're not held tightly in the matrix. So we wanted to find out if that's the case or not. And so we did a bunch of robotic biomechanics, and we found out that this curve just shows that the mongrel disc, one that you want, uh, uh, does not have the same excursion, inflection, extension, axial rotation we've heard about. It shows that the disc full of notochordal cells is much more stable. And the beagle disc, like the degenerative human one, becomes unstable. So we thought, okay, we published this a couple years ago. Uh, so we thought, all right, well, so these discs seem to work better, and they seem to make better stuff. 
And I explained to you about the toothbrushes already, so that's kind of a cartoon showing what they are. And, 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 and the, a normal intact one on the, uh, that's up here, uh, when, it's everything, when everything is good, uh, it hang, the core proteins are competent, it hangs on to water. But when they cleave and the Pac-Man are active, then there goes the water and there goes the disc. So it, it doesn't work well. So what happens is the disc loses its biomechanical properties, it gets a little stiffer, cells die inside there, the exercise matrix changes, um, and it can become innervated, which it shouldn't be on the inside, it can cause more pain, we have no way of knowing. Uh, it's a little unpredictable. You look for patterns of loading, people who have this problem will tell you weight-bearing hurts or bending forward or sitting or something like this. I liken it to a tire. You get steel belts and rubber and all that stuff, and you might get a little damage to it, and it's okay. And then all of a sudden, one day, there goes your flat tire. You might have gone over a little bump, you might have gone over 10,000 puddles, particularly in Toronto. Uh, so so um, this is kind of what happens. So what happens here, in a, in a nutshell, really, is you get disturbed shock absorption, and you get too much segmental motion, instability, let's say, it leads to a little excessive loading and stretching, and then you walk in someone's office with my back's killing me, or my neck hurts, or something else. That is actually a, car, a, a, a famous painting about rigor mortis, uh, um, about, um, what's that disease? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Clostridium tendinae, right, exactly. Yeah, I've seen those patients too. So. The, the dichotomy between this mongrel, goofy-looking dog with this really nice, healthy disc and this beagle dog that doesn't was it fascinated us and me from a PhD in years later. So we thought, well, wonder if we could find out what that stuff they make is. So we call it notochordal cell conditioned medium. So we take the discs that are healthy and put them into a little dish, kind of, with media. It was nothing in it, just sugars and salts to keep the cell, no growth factors or anything. And we collect that stuff. And we wanted to figure out how it works. So we tested a bunch of disc cells, and this is a complicated cartoon, I don't want to bore you, but I just want to explain to you the way cells die, there's a number of ways, but one way is through a receptor, and a series of events occur that result in cell death, called caspase system. Certain things happen and, 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 and cells die. But we found out that whatever these notochordal cells make, it stabilizes the mitochondrial membrane in the disc cell. The, that's, that, the mitochondria is the organelle that makes energy. And when it stabilizes it, it suppresses what's called cytochrome C translocation. So it basically it stops the activation of that whole pathway. We also reported recently that this notochordal media turns on a very, very, very important regulator of cell death called XIAP. It's a big deal in cancer. We found out that notochordal media turns on the expression of this. We tried to kill these cells with a chemotherapeutic drug called etoposide, and it kills cells. But we suppress etoposide cell death with whatever this notochordal stuff is. And so that seems to activate or suppress certain key regulators and the cells are protected from dying. We thought that's probably a good thing. So we wanted to find out how it worked. And so we took this notochordal media from a dog's and injected it in the injured rat disc. So I showed you this earlier. So here you'll see control medium. We injected these discs with just regular media. It's got nothing in it but sugars and salts and that's all. <laughs> And, 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 and it's all, after 10 weeks, it's all no good. But look what happens when we inject notochordal media. Everything comes back to almost normal. So what's in notochordal media? Well, we looked to see what happens, and we showed that when we tested, all the good stuff, the stemness markers and collagen 2 is rescued. And we thought, okay, so what's in there? And could we make some magic stuff and inject it into this <laughs> to help? So we did. So we did a whole bunch of complicated biochemical work. Uh, I won't go into it for time reasons. But to basically to tell you, we found that was in there, and we published it in a Nature paper a few years ago, a few months ago, called Scientific Reports. And we, this is, whoa, what does this all mean? What it means is CTGF, TGF beta 1, and WISP 2 are two, three important proteins involved with this. And we found out through other complicated analyses, the same, I know, what is this? Some kind of, you know, kids thing. But again, we found out that these, these molecules have very serious and important interplay. And so we looked into human discs, degenerative discs, and these molecules are undetectable in degenerative human discs. They're abundantly present in a healthy rat. After we injure it, they're gone. Same thing in the dogs. So we have now um, tested on human discs, and we show that this is an increase in cell viability, a cell proliferation in human discs. When we add both these two molecules, CTGF and TGF beta 1, we showed that these molecules also turn on the gene regulation of important matrix proteins. And we show that uh, it turns off markedly 
then we add IL-1 beta or interleukin 1 beta and TNF alpha, and we add our, our rescue molecules, it turns off the pro-inflammatory and matrix degrading Pac-Man. So it seems to, and it works on human disc cells. And then we injected it into this rat disc, uh, this, just these two molecules, not the whole complex proteins that dogs make. And if you look at this, that's normal here. That's degenerative. After saline, that's what happens when we inject our molecules. And agrican is restored. Collagen type 2, the brown stuff is all restored, almost back to normal. We show that the major players involved in inflammation are turned off by this injection, whereas with saline, all these uh, matrix players are turned on, including pain-involving molecules. And I'm almost done. And then we also show that um, the stemness <clears throat> markers are maintained and so the notochordal markers. So basically what I'm telling you is the injection of these two molecules rescues the disc virtually back to normal. Um, we have patterned out the entire molecular sequence of events of how it occurs, how it works, such that these two molecules recapitulate what the essential ingredients from notochordal condition media does, turns off inflammation, turns off the catabolic activity, turns on the anabolic restorative aspects of the disc cells, and we are hopeful this may be able to work in, the, in humans. So if we have a better, we're trying to make a, we're trying to make a better mousetrap. Uh, and if we can get this magic stuff sorted out, uh, we're very interested in doing it. I'd like to thank some funding sources, my uh, smart people in my lab. And uh, with that, uh, I'm finished. Thank you.